Hello friends, welcome back. In this tutorial, we will study about Fermat's theorem. According to this theorem, if p is a prime number and a is a positive integer which is not divisible by p, then a raised to power p minus 1 and 1 are congruent modulo p. It means if we divide a raised to power p minus 1 by p, then we will get remainder 1. Now let us prove this theorem. See, in this case, a and p are relatively prime because p is a prime number and a is not divisible by p. Therefore, a and p are relatively prime. Now consider a set of positive integers less than p. So this is the set and it contains the element 1, 2, 3, so on up to p minus 1. So this is a set of positive integers which are less than p. Now multiply each element of this set by a and then take mod p of each element. If we do this then we will get this set x whose elements will be 1a mod p, 2a mod p, 3a mod p, so on up to p minus 1 into a mod p. So this set x is obtained by multiplying each element of this set by a and then taking mod p of it. Now see, every element of this set x will be less than p. It is because of this mod p operation. Right, because when we divide any number by p, then the remainder will always be less than p. Therefore, every element of this set x will be less than p. And see, no element of this set x will be 0, because 1a, 2a, 3a, so on, up to p minus 1a. These numbers are not divisible by p. So, uh, since these numbers are not divisible by p, therefore, when these numbers are divided by p, the remainder will not be 0. So, no element of this set x will be 0. Now see, no two integers in this set x will be equal. No two elements of this set x will be equal. Now let us prove it. Suppose we have assumed that two elements of this set x are equal. If the two elements of this set are equal, then it is only possible if there exist two elements j and k in this set such that j a and k a they both are congruent modulo p it means if we divide j a and k a both by p then we will get same remainder so if uh, it is possible that j a and k a they both are modulo uh, they are both are congruent modulo p right if it is possible that j a and k a are congruent modulo p then in this uh, equation you can see that a is relatively prime to p Therefore, we can remove a from both sides of this equation. If we remove it, then we will get this equation. So, if this equation is correct, then it should also be correct. Now, if this equation is correct, then j and k are congruent modulo p. It means if we divide j and k both by p, then we will get same remainder. But it is not possible because both j and k are less than p and both j and k are different elements. Therefore, if we divide j and k, by p then we will get different remainders so it is not possible since this is not possible then this equation is also not possible since this equation is also not possible therefore it is not possible that two integers or two elements of this set x are equal now see every element of this set x is less than p no element of uh, this set x is zero and no two elements of this set x are equal therefore the elements of this set x and the elements of this set they both are same right so elements of this set x and elements of this set they are same so what we will do if we take mod p of the product of the elements of both sets then it will be same right if we do like this if we take mod p of the product of elements of both sets then we will get this equation right so so we will get this equation now you can see the left hand side of this equation in left hand side we have taken the mod p of the product of numbers of set x so now see this term of this equation so this term is what is this term it is the mod p of a mod p into 2a mod p and so on up to p minus 1a mod p. So it will be equal to the mod p of a into 2a into 3a into so on up to p minus 1 into a. Right? Because of this rule, mod n of 
a mod n into b mod n is equal to mod n of a into b. So in this equation, this left term will be replaced by this term. If we do this, then we will get this equation. Right? Now in this equation, you can see that at left hand side, in left term, this uh, a, this a is appearing p minus 1 times. Right? So here there is a product of p minus 1 number of a's. So it will be equal to a raised to power p minus 1. So when we do this, when we replace all the a's in uh, this uh, term which is at left hand side by a raised to power p minus 1, then we will get this equation. Right? Now in this equation you can see at both hand side 1 into 2 into 3 and so on up to p minus 1 and 1 into 2 into 3 so on up to p minus 1. It is equal to p minus 1 factorial. So this term in both sides will be replaced by p minus 1 factorial right so when this term is replaced by p minus 1 factorial in both sides then we will get this equation now this equation what this equation specifies so this equation specifies the mod p of this term a raised to power p minus 1 into p minus 1 factorial and mod p of p minus 1 factorial it is same so we can say that a raised to power p minus 1 into p minus 1 factorial and p minus 1 factorial they are congruent modulo p so we can write it like this now in this equation you can see that p minus 1 factorial is relatively prime to p so we can remove p minus 1 factorial from both sides so when we remove p minus 1 factorial from both sides then we will get this equation right so hence we have proved that a raised to power p minus 1 and 1 are congruent modulo p